I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. Deputies say a man who once appeared on America's Most Wanted for the stabbing of his wife was at the center of a dramatic standoff with authorities in Palm Coast Saturday. Deputies pulled over 46-year-old Michael Moore in the city's B section for allegedly driving a stolen vehicle. He was wanted on a warrant in Virginia for assault and battery during a robbery in which deputies say he zip-tied a woman and held her at gunpoint at a business. Moore, who refused to come out of the car that was idling at the corner of Beaver Dam Lane and Bel Air Drive, started a Facebook Live of the events. The circumstances drew three dozen deputies, a SWAT team, and the Flagler County Fire Flight Chopper. Five neighboring homes also had to be evacuated. After three hours, Sheriff Rick Staley says Moore was getting hungry and needed to use the restroom, so he surrendered peacefully. Deputies say he had weapons in the car, but they weren't in his hands when he stepped out. More than two decades ago, Moore was profiled on America's Most Wanted for being a fugitive wanted for attempted murder and kidnapping. According to the TV show, Moore stabbed his estranged wife 33 times in Richmond and abducted their five-year-old daughter. His estranged wife survived. This portion of Flagler's Morning News brought to you by the Daytona Beach International Airport, Delta Airlines nonstop to Atlanta, and starting in May, nonstop flights to New York City via American Airlines. The federal government may be open temporarily, but there are those impacted by the longest shutdown in U.S. history. One agency is the federally funded Family Life Center here in Flagler County. Trish Ciccone, the center's executive director, says not only is the center not getting funding, but... They were already three months behind paying us to begin with. Ciccone told WNZF's Free For All Friday that she had to lay off about six of her 27 member staff on January 10th so that the center could stay open. Ciccone said that those who still work at the center are doing multiple jobs now, and those laid off are looking for jobs. Jaconi says the center is still serving its residents. We're doing everything we can to make sure that our bills are paid so that they have a safe home to come home to. She said that should the shutdown continue, the center might have to make some changes. Which means that we may offer services to less people or we can't assist them with getting their injunction or we may not be able to answer their calls or accompany them somewhere because we just don't have the staffing to do it. The Family Life Center is the only certified domestic violence shelter in Flagler County. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. A Palm Coast Realtor takes his own life, John Arking reports. A Palm Coast man who suffered through agonizing physical pain for several years took his own life at a house on Cashmere Trail last week. Flagler County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to the house on a 911 call about an attempted suicide. The first deputy who arrived performed CPR on Corey Michael McClure, who was unresponsive. Another deputy found McClure had no pulse and appeared to have died earlier in the day. The 25-year-old realtor had apparently hung himself with a belt and was found by his mother. A suicide note was found in the living room. It's just the latest in a string of suicides in Flagler that have caught the attention of officials concerned about a growing suicide epidemic and a lack of services to try and stem it. A 17-year-old Palm Coast High School student ended her life earlier this month by hanging the third county teen to die by suicide in 18 months. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arkin. There's a special Valentine's Day celebration in Flagler County this year. Tony Magoo has the story. Tom Bexley, Flagler County Clerk of the Court, may have started an annual event last year. On the steps of the county courthouse, 16 couples showed up to be married, and another five couples were there to renew their vows. Bexley's own mom and dad were there to renew on their 50th anniversary, and music that day was provided by a string quartet. Well, it's back. This is the second of what will be an annual event, Bexley said. The next Valentine's Day wedding ceremony is scheduled for February 14th and again at noon on the courthouse steps, with Bexley presiding and with an ensemble of the Flagler Youth Orchestra performing. To register for the event, application for marriage licenses must be made no later than February 11th. If you'd like more information, call the recording department at 313-4360. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Tony Magoo. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.